going to be right there. And go! 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 The coaches are just incredible here and we have a really amazing and special group of people that are helping us learn to ski better. But yeah, it, you know, it's also just like really inspirational. I mean, Laura and Leslie are both these former Olympians and so strong and, you know, encouraging. They know so much about the sport, so they can do this. You know, maybe I can work up to something like that too. Laura was my neighbor and she moved in when I was about five years old. I heard she was an Olympian and at the time I didn't even really know what an Olympian was but I knew it was like something super honorable. And so when she went to Nagano and she came back to town, um, the whole city lined the streets of Winthrop and she rode in on a fire truck and I just thought it was like the coolest thing in the whole world because I'm like obviously what she just did is so honorable. Like, all the people, I didn't know much outside of our town at that point, and so the fact that our whole town was there to greet her, I was like, oh, I wanna be part of something like that. And so from that moment on, I started telling everybody, like, I'm going to the Olympics. I mean, they would like have a conversation and, and I wouldn't even listen to them. I'd be like, well, did you know I'm going to the Olympics? And they're like, well, great. <laughs> Honestly, my greatest highlight was the first Olympics that I went to, pulling on my Stars and Stripes uniform. It was just like, it was just a feeling I'll never forget. It was like a little kid in the greatest candy shop of the whole entire world. <laughs> like, you know, the world was just your, the, the sky was your limit. There's three obvious alumni who've had great success beyond um, the Valley, internationally really, um, Eric and Sadie Bjornsson and Brian Gregg. And they were all um, Olympians in 2014. The three of them were on the team and then in 2018, Sadie and Eric were on the team again. Those are our stars, of course. <laughs> Quite a few others who've had success either in college level skiing or in um, biathlon, that kind of thing. For the last 10 years, we've had kids from our program representing the United States at an international level, both in the junior and the senior levels internationally, and we're really proud of that. I probably first got on skis when I was like two, early two. Um, but yeah, I just really like it and it's really fun. Yeah, that felt good. We moved to the Metta when I was like one and a half. Oh, so young. Yeah, and my parents took me out on like one of those like little things that like got towed behind them while oh, yeah, yeah. they skied and that was fun. And I don't really remember much of that and I know I just started skiing and at first I didn't really like it. Like, ski team was like, oh, why do I have to do this? But then I ended up really liking it and especially when it got like more competitive and serious. I just love skiing in general, but I love being outside and the snow makes everything so pretty and just like gliding and skiing is so much fun. All my best friends ski and so I just get to spend the winter with all my friends and it's really fun. And I also love racing, so. That's our mission, to share a love of skiing with Metha Valley youth. And to me, that means making them skiers for life. So if the kids are in it just to ski with their friends and as long as they do it when they're 50, I'm happy. My friends and I used to have this little group where we'd go ski along the community trail in Mazama, um, just shuffling along and um, falling over a lot. I didn't really know any technique before, but then when I um, joined the Nordic team, I started learning technique, yeah. Can anyone tell me why we might do that? Why we might take off our ski like that? To get better balance. Our weight on our clothes and we bounce up and down nice. 
Being a part of these kind of athletics, you get to see your body as something that is strong, as capable, as opposed to something that needs to look a certain way and be shaped in a certain way. What I try to communicate is that skiing is for everybody and that we're all here to do different things on skis and that ultimately it's a wonderful thing to go and do a race. Go! Yeah. Go, 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 And then they'll go into their freestyle. Let's give them a, a cheer. And that the point of the race is never what place you came in. It's the fact that you got out and you pushed yourself as hard as you could and you learned what your limits were. We have our lollipop race that should be starting. grueling. <laughs> it's cold, you're covered in snot sometimes, it's miserable in a lot of ways, especially if you're racing, you know, and there's joy to it too, but I think that my hope for these kids is that they, they take all of the things they learn about their bodies and their limits and how they can push and grow within those things into their adulthood and that they, they continue to take care of themselves in a way that includes taking care of their body, which is, you know, their, their truest home. Three, two, one, go. Like, it's nice to be challenged, and there's so many fast, like, junior girls all over the U.S. and on our team, especially this year. So we're all, like, just pushing each other and um, helping each other become faster. It's a really great community and everyone's so supportive and just like I love to push myself and see how fast I can go. The coaches like Leslie, Laura, Pete, our strength coach, really pushed us to like know what we were doing and like um, understand why we were doing it as well. So like we weren't just following routines or plans like the coaches weren't just telling us which wax to put on our skis but they're pushing us to like really know why we did all that and be kind of our own coaches at times or self-sufficient and I think compared to other programs that really stands out in like preparedness and knowledge and readiness. The summer is definitely like um, I don't know this saying is that skiers are made in the summer so um, that's definitely like the biggest uh, training focus I would say. And then in the winter, we're just um, racing like most weekends. It's mainly just preparing for the next weekend, so we're not getting in as many hours, but definitely a lot of intensity and stuff. Racing is hard. It's hard, and it's hard to put yourself out there. And just there willingness to step out and be brave and be strong like it's it's risky right life is risky so i think what i would like to instill in the kids is it's like racing is like it's a long-term thing if you have a goal up here it's going to take a long time and we race and race and race and if things go bad 
you just have to flip it, right? You have to turn that experience around the next day. I definitely have memories of, you know, crossing a finish line and just feeling like I did not do my best and maybe I fell or maybe someone passed me that I was trying to stay ahead of and just like beating myself up about that. I have people around me that are saying, you know what, you're going to use that next time to make you better and like you still skied a great race. Remember, do not go before go. Go on go. Biathlon is cross-country skiing and rifle marksmanship. Let's see, I've been coaching biathlon for 19 years. I was on the U.S. ski team, Alpine ski team, long time ago, uh, and raced internationally and on the World Cup. And I got a four-year athletic scholarship to University of Wyoming. And there I had to both Alpine and cross-country ski, since women's athletes were few and far between. I got into coaching biathlon because I was trying to keep my kid cross-country skiing. It was a little nine, ten-year-old little boy, and I said, well, if you ski around the loop, you get to shoot a gun. And how fun would that be? And that was a great carrot. We kept, kept him skiing. Three, two, one, go. It's really challenging in our program to work with the age diversity. So I have kids that are nine to 18, years old and their skill ability is so varied. We have beginners to kids that have made the world junior team. Compared to a biathlon race, the Nordic race is just like a walk in the park. Like You don't have to worry about your zero, you don't have to worry about equipment check, the weather, what's going to happen with the targets. You have to be really mentally prepared, both for shooting and skiing. Good job, Wyatt. Good job, Wyatt. One of the things we teach the kids is how to shoot a firearm with, with a heart rate. Because you go out there and you work really, really, really hard and have to ski fast. And then you have to come into the range and focus. You come into the range and it's only your breathing and you don't hear the crowd. You hear, it's, it's like um, you hear them, but they're not really there. And now the goal is not to think about whether or not you hit the target. It's whether or not you did the process properly and followed through and like the target doesn't matter. They can go out, work hard and seeing improvement, um, learning how to win gracefully and how to handle not being number one. And I think that's really important in life because you go through life and uh, certainly we don't win all the time. I probably learn more from my failures than I do my victories because sometimes I don't know what I did to make a thing successful, but I certainly know when I fail what I did wrong and that I need improvement. I have competed in biathlon and as a master's. I'm a really hands-on learner and I got to go out and do things in order for me to be able to tell somebody how to do things. And to me, I just feel like I'm a better coach when I do that. I totally understand Every year we sit down and we talk, what, what are your goals this year? And how can I help you achieve those? And are these goals realistic? So they have their set of goals and how they're going to manage this. And then they know that like with that set of goals, in order for them to achieve those goals, they also have to be part of this integral team that works together to make that happen for for each skier. Every practice there is a team element and so much of that team element is in how kids will encourage one another or how they'll relate to one another. I got to learn pretty young what it means to you know have the same goal as the person beside you and and how to not bring that person down but how to lift that person up and I think the ability to work together in sports, especially in an individual sport, has incredible amounts of power. I would say that my coaching philosophy is probably just sharing enjoyment of the sport, trying to show them that even when you're working hard, you can have fun on some level, that hard work isn't a bad thing. We grew up in an alpine town, Stowe, Vermont, and so we skied 
there. And then in 1976, when I was 13, Bill Koch won a silver medal and my dad was so excited and that made me want to win a gold medal, which I never did, but um, anyway, it got me on this path and <laughs> I've been pursuing skiing ever since. I went to a ski academy, went to World Juniors, skied in college, went to World Championships and the Olympics and then came here mainly because I met Laura. At, well, we raced together in 1994 and it's worked out great to be my neighbors and best friends, run the program together and everything. I ran NCAAs for Utah on a scholarship and then um, when I finished running I was like, oh, I really enjoy competing, right? And so and I really enjoy cross country skiing. I learned how to ski and just sort of worked my way into citizen races. And I made the 94 Olympic team. And then I, I skied, you know, all the uh, races in the US. And then I made the 98 Olympic team, skied in Nagano. Having Laura as a coach, what she's taught me is that I can always do more than I think, that I'm always stronger than I think. I think it's a really cool thing that like she believes in her athlete so much that she shows us that we can believe in ourselves as much as she believes in us. Well done, you guys. Some races a while back, like maybe like something wasn't quite right, like maybe my wax was off a little bit and it really like sort of like cascaded mentally and I'm like, oh, I can't do this, everything's going wrong and yeah, but then they're like, okay, you gotta remain positive. As you breathe in, do a count, count to three or four or five, even six, breathe out. We're working on like mindfulness training so we don't stress out as much during races. We can like not get like so competitive that we lose it. I know initially the kids were like, this is so boring, right? I'm not gonna use this. It's just starting layer upon layer. They're hearing things and then I'll ask them like at a race, okay, well, what did you use today for mindfulness training? Okay, well, I was super nervous and I thought about my hands, or how did you calm your breathing? Oh, I thought about, you know, I just thought about one thing, and because and, you can only think about one thing at a time, and how my boots connected to my skis. You know, like, it's, it's starting to click. Hopefully, they're learning life skills and not even realizing it. And maybe one of these days in their life, when they have kids, maybe they'll realize, oh yeah, you know, I learned that from my biathlon coach but probably they won't ever. And I've learned that I like can do things that I like don't expect myself to do. Like, I can, I can succeed against people who I don't think I'm gonna succeed against. Being part of the national team has been amazing. It's been so cool to have the opportunity to be surrounded by all the super fast women. It was really neat to finally then go on to ski at the Olympics and then this past Olympics in 2018 um, the spring when I came back to the Met How, I actually rode in on a horse and carriage and, and it was the same scene like the, the town was on the side of the street and, and greeted us down here at the barn and, and it was just a really cool, you know, full circle experience like that it was my, my little kid dream that I got to watch and, and really the neatest part about it is that I think that there are a lot of young kids that will have the same experience and already there, you know, we have some of the, some local skiers from the Met How that are some of the best in the world. And so for sure it's gonna happen again. And for sure we're gonna keep this tradition going of the whole town greeting people back from the Olympics. So I guess the only thing that's gonna change is what they ride in on. I learned that if you really wanna do something, you gotta work at it. You gotta try, you can't just sit there. You have to persevere when Things are not going the way you would like, then, well, keep skiing. <laughs>